Okay, so welcome everybody on today's webinar. Uh, on behalf of Wojtek Fomankiewicz and me, uh, we are really excited to share with you the role of open virtualization in a modern data center. Wojtek, a few words from you on the first slide. Hello everyone, nice to have you here. So we'll, today we'll say about the open virtualization, what is the role, as, as Paolo said. I hope you will enjoy. Okay, so first few slides about us. So first we'll start Wojciech. Wojciech is not typical architect. You see the bike here. So Wojciech, what about you? Yeah, so as you can see, my hobby is motorbikes. I love music as well. That's something that keeps me awake. Uh, and, and, and every day I'm just, you know, open source enthusiast and trying to uh, drive uh, adoption of open source technology in Central Eastern Europe looking after the pre-sales organization in a Red Hat. Okay, uh, about myself, I'm uh, one of the co-founders of the Store company. Uh, I'm saying about myself that I'm really addi addicted to the data protection solutions, safe, serve in every combination. So I love cloud, love on-prem, but also love the open uh, solutions, uh, like open virtualization, so I'm one of the people who are really engaged, like Wojciech, in open virtualization portal. Uh, and our goal is to share with you the best insights about what's going on uh, in the in a, in an open world. So you can find it us on the LinkedIn. You can write it as an email after that. So in case you will have any question during the presentation, feel free. So what our goal today is to share with you. Uh, how we see that the modern data center is changing. What challenges we see that today and uh, administrators, today companies are struggling with. And Wojciech, could you explain a little bit why it's so density in, in the middle? What's going on on the slide? Yeah, so this is the, the recent uh, research about virtualization trend and, and the usage, right? And uh, if you think about the, um, what kind of virtualization majority of us is using, actually the majority, the vast majority is, is proprietary solutions like VMware, et cetera. So this reflects the challenges that, that the, uh, our users or uh, proprietary virtualization users uh, are facing. Mm -hmm. so as you can see, budget and cost, that's, that's a big constraint. Uh, performance, rela reliability, network issues. In the middle, uh, something this, this is uh, in this circle uh, in the middle, there is a number of uh, other um, challenges that actually we can understand that uh, standard virtualization or classical virtualization we have uh, has a lot of, a lot of um, gaps. Uh, in functionality, so management, automation, integration with third-party tools, scalability, those kind of things. People resources, right? How to really get okay, get rid. Oh, no worries. Yeah, uh, how to really uh, let our people uh, use their the, their skills and and uh, capabilities to the higher uh, targets, not just dealing with creating uh, manually uh, virtual machines, etc. So those are the real uh, challenges. Actually, uh, what I'd like to say here, uh, when you think about uh, the modern uh, uh, technology trends, uh, uh, like containers, like you know, uh, microservices, and this kind of things that are really now uh, very active and very um, sort of hype about that, uh, virtualization, the role of virtualization is uh, actually becoming um, a solid foundation of everything else that we are going to use and build upon it. Mm -hmm. so, so actually it should be rock, rock solid engine that it's not visible, not doesn't take any of our time, right? Or attention, it just be okay. there and it should be working well. And that's it. Um, so, <clears throat> so we'll show an example how to use the virtualization in a modern data center. Okay. Let, let, let me add one thing from my perspective, Wojciech. Mm -hmm. uh, I see that many companies, many uh, IT specialists, admins, some people in, in, um, which is connected to the infrastructure, they see that the virtualization is not enough, yes? They're looking for something more, not only from the cost perspective, but 
this is what's going on on, on, on nowadays IT. Everybody moving forward to have a much more orchestration. They're looking for the private cloud, hybrid cloud, or even public cloud approach. So uh, also, what, we, what I noticed when I, you know, looking for some insights in 2016, 17, there was last time when the Gartner co compared uh, the virtualization engines. After that, um, the Gartner said that it's not only about the virtualization, it's all, all about the cloud management, much more, um, let's say, um, uh, wider approach uh, when we have a containers, when we have a different type of the workloads. And this, we have 2019 and we need to, we need to emphasize and a little bit uh, see that the visualization itself is really important, but we, we would like to see something more. And actually we prepared uh, for you today a uh, few, few things. I have a problem with my mouse, I don't know why. I'm trying to move. My mouse actually disappeared. <laughs> but I cannot, I cannot move to the next slide. This is quite crazy right now. Just give me a sec. Okay, keep trying. No, I, I, I put the, I, I, I put the mouse that annotate. So I think you see that my mouse is right now going on the screen, but I cannot see it. Yeah, we see the cursor we don't name. Yeah, but I don't see it, so it's it's a little bit crazy. I trying to, a little try to go to the next slide. Ah. Uh, Try to maybe use keyboard. No, no, no. There's, there is a small chance that I will, yeah. Yeah, we did it. <laughs> it wasn't easy. Okay, uh, so we prepared for you today a demo. So we will not only emphasize and go through the slides, uh, but Wojciech prepared you a really good demo that we would like to show how the technology actually looks in a real, uh, in a live demo, yes? Yeah, right. So, so we're going to show you um, how to build a basic example, a, a WordPress uh, service, a virtual machine with the WordPress installed on it, using modern uh, tools uh, which are uh, a bit beyond virtualization itself. So virtualization has its own role in the middle here. We will be using, we'll be using Red Hat virtualization in this example, but also uh, automation engines like Ansible, um, which will build uh, a WordPress, uh, uh, which will uh, install WordPress component on a basic rail machine. So as you can see, creating, uh, so user can click, uh, can use um, service catalog. This is functionality uh, delivered by CloudForms, so cloud management platform, another example of, of uh, orchestration actually uh, tool. And when you click, uh, please order, please uh, give me a, create a, a WordPress VM. CloudForms will give two tasks uh, to, different, to different engines. Uh, first, we'll ask for a generic Linux machine and in this case, we are using a uh, rel template. And it's very important because uh, why it's generic, because we don't need to keep and maintain many different options, many different versions of, of uh, Linux image. It's just one basic image that we can use to many different, um, in many different scenarios. And the other, um, on the right side, you see Ansible flow. So CloudForms will ask, okay, now make it a WordPress VM. So uh, uh, Ansible will apply uh, a playbook that will make this VM uh, apply a role to this VM. The WordPress, of course, is just an example. So, what you, I guess um, if I will start stop sharing, you will share your screen and show how to start this automation. Yeah, uh, so <clears throat> I'll share my screen. Um, so let's start with uh, with CloudForms. Uh, actually, uh, the demo will take a, a while, so I will just quickly show the user experience. Uh, I'm logging as an admin, so I have uh, a bit more uh, options than user, but it looks the same from the user perspective. So I'm going to uh, click catalogs and see what service catalogs do I have available. And uh, our, our demo is here, uh, Tower, uh, CloudForms and Tower Bundle means uh, VM plus uh, Ansible automation. And I just click order. Uh, when I order the service, I need to, I'm, I'm having a um, dialogue where I input uh, just the minimum necessary details about the service I'm, I'm going to implement. 
So let's say it will be uh, WordPress, let's call it like this. Hmm. Okay, additional parameter as an example, let's, let's specify the, the web service port. Um, so you can imagine there, are, uh, there can be any other op options, any other parameters to, to define, to, to order the service. And I just click submit. And in a while, I can see, okay, that this is the live demo, so expect unexpected. For example, mouse may start, uh, stop working. <laughs> um, so I see uh, on the list uh, uh, different requests. So the recent one is pending and the status is pending approval. Um, so by the way, there is an approval process uh, embedded in the tool. So imagine user asking for something which is uh, exceeds his quota or, or, and so on. We can implement approval. Uh, so uh, me as an admin at the moment, I can approve this request myself. So I'm just saying, okay. okay so as I understand, you just, you just log in. So it's a uh, self-service oriented uh, platform. So you just, you, you, you are one of the users in a company. You just requested your service. So you see, I would like to get this machine or this type of the service inside my company. You just requested and everything started to provision, automize, so the VM will create it, et cetera, et cetera. Exactly. Uh, so uh, I have a list of requests. When I click on one, on the recent one, I see who was, who was the requester, when was requested, uh, what is the um, parameters uh, uh, specified in a dialogue. So I see basically the information about the request and I can approve or not, right? Or, or okay. ask to modify it. So, that's so let's, let's, co let's come back to the slides. So we just, let's wait for the final results. Right. In the meantime, we'll go through the different layers and we'll explain how we see these roles uh, are crucial for the modern, modern, data, modern data center, yes? Yeah, let's go through the slides and uh, let's uh, speak about uh, particular components of this uh, um, demo or actually this automation system. Okay. Share your screen now if your mouse is working. It's not, it's not easy. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> okay. Sure. No worries, should be good. Do you see it? Yes, I can see it. Okay. Okay. So you just use the cloud forms to provision the Red Hat machine uh, on, on a Red Hat virtualization. So we'll create a VM and Ansible will do all of the magic from the WordPress. So after 10 minutes of our um, speech, we will see the final results. Yes? Yeah, that's the plan. Oh, hope it works. <laughs> <laughs> So let's go to the from the different layers. So let's start with the Ovid Red Hat virtualization. So uh, Wojciech, could you a little bit tell about where we are today? Yeah, so, so at the moment you have different options. And one of, one of the options is using traditional virtualization. So if you have proper orchestration and automation tools, you can really use traditional virtualization to build a private cloud based on it. And OVIR or Red Hat virtualization is the perfect example. So this is a very classical approach. Uh, we have uh, data virtual data center, storage, clusters, hosts, and gives you uh, gives us a uh, high availability of the of the virtual machine we are running, right? So so you can use uh, this um, platform for anything, but in particular, it's very good to use as a, um, for the stateful workload. Okay, so if, if I would like to compare, so the Ovid and Retro Virtualization is, is like a Hyper-V on a VMware, yes? Or yeah, exactly. even better for in, in many areas, yes? It is better actually, but yeah, you can. <laughs> you I, can I, I knew that you say like that. Uh -huh. But you can compare. But what I was trying to say, uh, there is always um, a space for traditional virtualization. When you imagine a control plane, you have, for example, OpenStack or OpenShift, the, the Kubernetes implementation, or you know the other uh, static, uh, stateful uh, workload like um, I don't know Active Directory uh, server or I don't know vCenter manager um, database. Those kind of things they really live good and then they, they work well on traditional okay. virtualization. So that's we have a traditional, what's next? Yeah, and the next is 
uh, I call it cloud virtualization, but actually it's uh, it's open stack. It's much more than just virtualization. It's a, a framework uh, to build um, cloud native, uh, flexible uh, workload for for your um, data center. So if you're looking at the um, components here, uh, open stack is very modular, right? Different modules are actually different projects responsible for different functionalities to your cloud. Someone called uh, OpenStack uh, cloud uh, operating system. Because okay, uh, when, when, when I should think about the OpenStack if I'm comparing the Ovid and the Red Hat virtualization? So anywhere when you uh, think about stateless uh, workload. Okay. If you have, or maybe something that is uh, extremely scalable, you can scale it out and in, back, uh, and really a huge scale. So, so big OpenStack implementations are uh, thousands of compute nodes, for example, right? Okay. And, uh, flexibility to use different backends, etc. So this is the cloud virtualization. Uh, I just use this term because I think it's, it matches today's topic and uh, reflects the, the, the functionality. And uh, uh, the other thing, uh, it's a bit exotic at the moment, right? But uh, let me explain a bit. <clears throat> and there is a project co called Cube, CubeVert. <clears throat> it's a uh, Kubernetes uh, platform or OpenShift in, uh, in the uh, Red Hat implementation, which gives you a uh, um, possibility to manage uh, containers, container workload at scale. And uh, in addition... It's funny because you put the VM inside the container, yes? Not, yeah, exactly. That's, not in an opposite way that normally workloads looks like right now is you, you, you put the containers on the VMs in most cases or the containers on the physical machines, yes? Yeah, it, it, it's not actually, uh, it, makes, it makes a lot of sense when you think about standardizing the platform. If you choose to, to run everything uh, in the containers, but you have something that has to be on a virtual machine, something that requires a specific kernel version, something that, you know, I don't know, some Windows uh, workload, something that you really need to, need, uh, want to isolate, inside virtual machine, you can use the same platform, container platform, but the virtual machine will be uh, run inside the pod, inside container. So that's the idea. And uh, so you can standardize modern, uh, you know, trends, uh, pass, pass platform, uh, container platform, and still have the same interface, the same tool to run uh, virtual machines. So that's the, that's the very big, uh, powerful message. Okay. okay. Why, um, this is going to, this is going to uh, to happen uh, very soon. Um, so then you need something to to make the job for you, right? So to automate the things, you don't want to to deal and install anything or configure anything manually. So Ansible, it's another uh, actually leading technology for for the automation for the configuration management. So you see three boxes here. So if you start from the left. You, you just can quickly build a playbook and play and, 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 and run some configuration changes or some automation on a few hosts. Then you can manage uh, it uh, better, like you really build a repository of, of playbooks, etc. Uh, so you have um, uh, really processes automated well. And when you reach a certain scale, you go and, and uh, you may use Ansible Tower. Ansible Tower, I'll show you on the, on the demo today as well, uh, is, a, um, is a management interface for all your Ansible automation in a data center. So when you imagine a huge data center, it's a lot of, a lot of automation and you need to have uh, control over it. So you have um, um, users, delegations, you keep secrets in, in one uh, safe place, you know, you have visibility in terms of graphical interface, what uh, went wrong, what uh, went well. Um, central point to keep all the, uh, all the control of, of the automation uh, flows. Um, okay. uh, the the question, question to you, my friend, uh, when I should start to consider the Ansible playbooks and Ansible, uh, using Ansible in my virtual environments, in my data center, should I start today without any hesitation? Or again, when, yeah, I think when is the good start, yes? I think you should have started uh, way um, back. I mean, a few months, if not years uh, uh, <laughs> already. Because there are always things that uh, could be automated, right? When you imagine skill scripts, it's uh, nice when you know, know them, but uh, when someone else jumps to, to, to do something, to fix something and see someone else's scripts, that's a bit of, of headache, right? 
Um, also, probably using a lot of daily routine um, operations, with, which can be automated, right? You will not make any manual mistake anymore when you automate things, when you standardize the configuration process. There's okay. no configuration drift, uh, etc. So Ansible is really, really something that should be implemented already. Um, and then we're coming to the orchestration part. So how to manage all the things together. Um, Red Hat Cloud Forms or uh, Manage IQ project that's the tool that lets you consolidate all the uh, data center technologies, virtualization, private cloud, public cloud also, into one control panel. You have one dashboard, you see all the data center in one place. And uh, this can create for you, uh, as, as we can see in our demo, mm -hmm. uh, automated workload, right? It, it can, uh, it can um, place your workload based on different... Um, uh, attributes, parameters uh, in, the, in the virtual local I, virtualization. I know. love the story because, you know, if we have a different workloads like VMware, Hyper-V, Red Hat virtualization, uh, we, can, we can have a single pane of glass so we can control it everything from one place. Uh, and of course, we have a huge options to automate it or even to talk with the third party platforms via the RESTful APR. API or even more, yes. Uh, we will not, we'll not consider it everything today on a demo, demo, but this can be a beautiful start to think about um, not VM approach, but a service uh, catalog oriented approach, yes. Yeah, exactly. And then at the end, you give your users control, right? Or uh, the service catalog to consume. You mm -hmm. assign quotas, you, you assign um, uh, permissions, and uh, you can also do the chargeback. You see what is the consumption, who is, con uh, who is using how much, right? So it okay. gives you some business vis visibility. And uh, health check, monitoring, reporting, a lot of things. Different control uh, policies. So you can check compliance. You can uh, use um, control policies to, to really respond to the live events. If someone, for example, started cloning a VM or, I don't know, shutting down or something, you can respond immediately, automatically. For example, this is our database. We don't allow to uh, clone it. And uh, CloudFront will, will send a cancel uh, task to, to the virtualization platform. So, so coming, Wojciech, coming back to our demo, uh, let's right now skip and move to, to your screen again. Mm -hmm. So stop sharing and let's see what we, what we just clicked a few minutes ago. It was 10 minutes ago, I guess. So let's see what, what happened and let's explain right now based on the knowledge that we just share with the last few screens, uh, why it's working like that, yes? Sure, let's see how it, how it went. Oh, nice. I think we just have live demo, as I said. Okay. <laughs> it was working before. Okay. Anyway, we have examples to show. Um, so let me see my services. Okay. So I have WordPress uh, service here. Mm -hmm. It has been created. And this one, uh, okay. It has created a virtual machine. So let me jump a bit uh, through the particular system. So uh, first of all, uh, Red Hat virtualization. Here is the interface. We normally don't have to do it. It's just uh, for the lab purposes to understand what's going on underneath. Um, <clears throat> to show you uh, what happened actually when I click the uh, provisioning. So uh, let's see the events. Um, say WordPress. Uh, we see that uh, the WordPress started, right? It has been created, configuration updated accordingly, and we have uh, WordPress VM started. Um, we can go and see the VM. Uh, this is our uh, demo, so we have hundreds of different uh, workshops machines. So this is our uh, virtual machine, which is running at the moment. Uh, I didn't check what went uh, wrong, but uh, uh, looks like VM uh, has been created at least. Then uh, our Ansible. So uh, to use Ansible, we need to have a, 
um, uh, playbooks repository. So this is the WordPress install uh, re repo. And this is the uh, main playbook called site, which installs, uh, applies different roles. So there is uh, five different roles that has been applied, common, MariaDB, Nginx, PHP, and WordPress. And, and each particular uh, role has its own directory here. So that, that's just basic, um, basic uh, repository of uh, to, to keep our Ansible playbooks, right? Let's say tasks, and here is, for example, task that installed the, the WordPress the last component. And uh, we use this uh, GitLab uh, repo in our Ansible. So let me just click, okay. Uh, this is Ansible Tower, the GUI that shows us the progress, right? We, we have here the status failed, but you can click on something that was successful uh, previously. So we can see the task, uh, um, what happened here. Um, we can see the dashboard in general, what is going on here, right? When you click on the, um, on the job template, we can see that uh, this is the, the playbook that um, uh, was uh, uh, implemented or run. The inventory is uh, RHV dynamic. It means it dynamically synchronized inventory uh, with Red Hat virtualization. So this is very important because Ansible need to know uh, which machine it should apply the playbook, mm -hmm. um, etc. So we see the, uh, the, um, the Ansible tasks here. And uh, when we go to, back to the um, Cloud Forms, we can go and check. Actually, probably this one will not be working, but let me use the other one that works. Actually, the same thing that uh, was run this morning. Um, we have a service and associated virtual machine. This is called test va at the moment. When we click, we have all the parameters about this machine. This is a unified view for every virtual machine in your data center. It doesn't matter which virtualization platform are you using, right? So we have IP address here, and we can easily check if this uh, is something that works. Mm -hmm. Let me um, check. Yeah, here we go. So this is the, exactly uh, the other service that was uh, run the same way. We have uh, WordPress uh, working. So we can so, imagine that if we have uh, a complex environment from the, let's say, mm, development perspective or QA perspective. So uh, we, we, we can schedule easily the service that is related to 10 on the, even 12 VMs and every VM can be pre-configured and ready uh, from the service layer perspective, yes? Exactly, so let me show you uh, how, this, how the definition uh, looks of the service, right? We have service item. Okay. Uh, this is our service bundle. Actually, we have items. Uh, one item is uh, uh, one virtual machine, one or, one or more, okay. which are uh, run from the same table. The same so we don't see the VM level, we see the catalog, service catalog level, yes? That's gathering the many VMs into yeah. the service, okay? Mm -hmm. And we have bundle, which consists of two components. First is uh, a VM, and the other is uh, Tower, uh, tower uh, job, right? So Ansible job. And we bundle those two elements together, uh, the defining the action and provision order and power on, power off uh, order, etc. So you can imagine here much more uh, items like different uh, VMs on, on one platform, some cloud instances, some containers, and associated uh, Ansible task for, for So you, you said that the, the, the cloud form is on the top. So when you just created the request, what actually you've done on the Red Hat virtualization engine? Uh, so uh, virtu Red Hat virtualization was uh, um, engaged in the moment when this part was created, uh -huh. VM, right? So we saw the um, VM has been created. Uh, and, and on top of it, once it's created, uh, the second uh, action order, provision order here was the Ansible. Okay, could you show this VM on the Red Hat virtualization UI? So I would like to see, of course, typically, if you have a cloud form, so you, don't, you don't need to go to the Red Hat virtualization, but in the example, we would like to show that uh, when we create the request, actually this, we provision to create this VM via the RESTful API. 
Exactly. So this is the Red Hat virtualization uh, interface, and we see WordPress and this test tool. That is another okay. example of the same service, uh, which has been created. And we can see here. Let's say, yeah, we have already WordPress. What happened with this with this VM it has been created. And test two. That's the another one. We can see um, the history and. Uh, 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 what has been locked <clears throat> uh, with this with this object? So that's that's the um, um, backend operation that okay. in, initiated by uh, Cloudforms. And the same we have we we can go to the Ansible and see that this playbooks this orchestration is managed via Cloudforms. Yes, exactly. So, okay. so this is the job template, and when you go to dashboard. Okay. We can see, uh, for example, the last task which was not successful, and it is saying it gives us information what happened. Uh, unable to start MariaDB for some reason. Okay, let's. Uh, this something happened. We, we have visibility, right? Okay. When we go to uh, something that went well, like this. No, it's you know it's typical. You know, uh, MariaDB took a bribe from the competition and she refused to work during a demo so uh, i used to i used i used to used to know the maria so it's it's normal so that's normal okay but well, at least we have uh, visibility we have the um, the track uh what happened who around what etc right in, and even in a graphical interface so we have uh, in in a tower we have you know hosts inventories projects etc all the uh, configuration uh, for uh, for our automation um, in whole data center. So coming back, Wojciech, to CloudForms, uh, could you could you explain? So let's imagine that we have a hundreds of the different VMs. We have a hundreds of the playbooks. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so I understand that Manage AQ Aka CloudForms give us a beautiful way how to you know cope with with this kind of the complexity. So this is my, one of the major roles in a you know uh, scalable data center that we can start from the few VMs, mm -hmm. uh, even and it can be the Red Hat virtualization of it, but then if we would like to go further, we can put on top different layers like Ansible, like like CloudForms, and and you know keep keep the scale going. Yes. Exactly, and underneath we may have different uh, virtualization engines. Many, right? We have vCenter here and and, and Ref, <clears throat> but when we click and uh, try to add a new one, we can see that we have also uh, a Hyper-V option here. Mm -hmm. uh, when we go to the cloud uh, menu here, cloud has a separate menus because it uses different uh, naming, different. Uh, uh, yeah, so we, we have um, AWS and OpenStack here. When we go to um, and uh, add new cloud provider, we can see the options of uh, also Google Cloud Engine and Azure. Uh, so we can actually manage much more than one virtualization. We can manage whole data center, including public cloud providers. Um, uh, plus the containers, right? We have uh, containers here. And we can um, uh, also use uh, OpenShift to build containers, and we can use uh, existing OpenStack or virtualization to to run OpenShift on top of it, and it's all correlated. That's that's the beauty. Let me try to see if we I can see. No, I cannot see. Oh yeah, we can see the topology, right? So, okay. so if we uh, display the names, we can understand. Okay, it's a quite a you know uh, a lot of objects here to to easily read but you can correlate which uh, for example container runs on which node and this node is a virtual machine on which platform is all correlated up from top to bottom so we, uh, we can see visibility um, mm -hmm. i can believe that we, we can we can move forward and talk about it you know a few hours but we wanted to give uh, you the high level perspective what we can do easily, uh, and what's the role of the cloud form? What's the role uh, of the Ovirt, and what's the role uh, of the Ansible? Uh, if we put together all of all of the pieces, yes. Yeah, that's that's a very good point. Uh, actually, uh, the virtualization uh, role in our data center needs to be something that exists and it's completely transparent. 
Mm -hmm. It's scalable, it's powerful, it's rock solid, but we don't really need to, to deal with this. Uh, not creating uh, VMs manually anymore, not changing any, uh, not any daily routines. We should, we should be using high, higher level tools to really use virtualization as a backend. So that's okay. the, uh, main, main idea. And then we can, you know, uh, take our time, I mean, use our time to do something more business related, something really smarter than just repeating uh, daily routines. Okay, fair enough. So I think we, we have a time right now uh, for the questions. So looking forward to have some. So, so let's wait. Um, Wojtek, thank you for your demo. From my perspective, it worked. Doesn't, doesn't mean if somebody took a bribe or, or, or not, yes? I uh, will speak with Maria later on. Okay, but at least we, we know what happened, right? We can yeah. different <laughs> logs and understand what happened and, and fix it. This was just exactly. Exactly. something set up quickly. But I hope uh, it just displayed and just showed um, the, our idea uh, of the whole environment. So let's, uh, let's wait a few seconds. If, we, if anybody has a question, you feel free to, to put on a Zoom group chat or just unmute your mic and uh, just speak and let us know. Okie doke, you have your chances. So uh, Wojciech, uh, I would like to really thank you for, for your time to sharing us the insight uh, about about um, about about the role of the open virtualizations, uh, we will. I will look forward to to get some questions later on after this, the the sessions. Of course, we will. We just recorded this demo. We just recorded the whole webinar, so we will share with uh, with the other specialists using a YouTube channel. But also, you will you you, can, you will find the script what we've done on the open virtualization dot pro uh, portal. Uh, Anything else from your side, my friend? No, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me here. It was my pleasure okay. to speak with you guys, and I hope uh, it might make sense for everyone. Okay. So have a great day. Stay in touch, and Wojciech for sure will come back with the, with the other insights, uh, and we'll, hopefully we'll have a chance to go much more deep, especially in the cloud for inside we are, because this, this is a major player and actually the game changer for today's uh, virtualization engines. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Cheers. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye.